get into it. Hi, Leslie. Thanks for joining us. Um, so we've got today Leslie oh, yeah. Harris from the First Time Buyers Club, uh, just here to talk yeah. to us all about the um, survey that was released recently um, from the First Time Buyers Club, interviewing, basically looking at the confidence uh, around first home buyers, uh, particularly in the Auckland market, and just how everyone's feeling in this sort of COVID-19 world. So Leslie, thanks for dialing in. No problem. It's certainly very, um, very different times that we're living in at the moment, that's for sure. And I think, you know, we're all wondering what's going to be happening next. Um, we, we sort of took the opportunity, I suppose, to reach out to our membership base, as we do from time to time, and just get a little bit of a sense from them in terms of how people were feeling, you know, was the COVID-19 lockdown period something that was making them nervous in terms of it was going to be harder for them to get into their first home? Or perhaps was it going to be an opportunity where, you know, potentially after lockdown, we'd see a whole lot of fire sale houses going on the market. And of course, first home buyers being cash buyers, you know, they might be able to jump in and grab some bargains. So, you know, we just put this together last week, um, sent it out to sort of well over 10,000 members and actually got a really good response rate back, which we think is, you know, a real indication of generally how people are thinking. Um, and interestingly enough, if we look at, you know, doing this last year, we had about 50% of our members saying, really, over the next three years, we're confident that we will look to buy our first home. But over this lockdown period, what we're seeing is that has now risen to 70% of members saying we're actually now confident that we're going to get into our first home. So that's quite a that's quite a big jump. Now that's there could be other things right? other that's, than COVID nineteen playing yeah. into this. You know, perhaps the low interest rates, perhaps things like, you know, Kiwi Saver and Home Start grants and things like that. There could be other things. But it is actually quite a significant shift, we think, in terms of people's confidence levels, which has got to be a good thing. That's amazing, right? So, so over the next three years, twenty percent of first-time buyers are more confident that they can get into their first home. Absolutely. So that's people who have responded. I mean, that's obviously, sure. you know, it's not representative of every single first-home buyer in the country, but we believe it's a really great cross-section, and you know, probably quite a realistic number actually. Yeah, there's got to be a number of reasons for that. Um, I mean, are people picking maybe there's going to be more houses on the market or less competition in the market? What what was the sort of general feedback? I think generally people think that we've been living in a real competitive, real over-competitive property market with real over-inflation. And they've seen houses go up and up and up and up and just keep going, you know, over and above what people would have expected to see at auctions. What we think possibly people are now seeing is we've just had worldwide something completely unexpected happen that could really actually unhinge the economy, could help, you know, end up with people, you know, losing jobs and perhaps actually impact the housing market in a downward trend. Um, so I think that's probably what it is. People are going, look, it could actually mean some relief in terms of if people have lost their jobs, they may have to sell their house, they might have to downsize. And, you know, often that potentially could bring some relief for first home buyers. Remember, they're in a great position because they're not having to sell in a potentially downward market. You know, they're only buying. So if you're buying in a downward market, that's actually potentially a plus. If you're a buyer that's actually selling and buying, then, you know, really it's not going to make that much difference. Yeah. And I think if you'd asked people in 2014 in Auckland, you know, what are your odds of being able to afford a house in the next three years? And houses were going up by 20% every year and they were chasing that, mm -hmm. that kind of pricing. That was quite a different question to, you know, what does it look like in the next three years? That's, um, I think houses mm -hmm. are going to be more affordable for everyone, right? Absolutely. And when we look at, you know, where our lifters actually come from, from the last time we did the survey, which was sort of 18 months ago, we're not talking 2014, we're talking, you know, back end of 2018. So that is quite a, it's quite a shift. Mm. Um, in 
interesting. You know, we might do a little bit more digging to kind of find out why people have kind of gained that confidence. This is just the raw data at this point. Interesting, though, we actually did get a few other insights in terms of, you know, people being concerned about a few of the things with COVID-19. I'm just going to quickly have a look at what some of those other concerns were. So one of the big concerns that members seemed to have was the value of my KiwiSaver for my deposit um, may well have dropped. So we had 62% plus of our members being a little bit concerned about that, um, which is actually quite a significant number of people are worried about KiwiSaver. Um, I don't know what your advice to your, um, you know, people that you're talking to, Rupert, but, you know, we, we always sort of stress the fact that KiwiSaver is a long-term investment. Mm. You know, no one's gone into KiwiSaver wanting to make a quick buck. It's a long-term investment and there are going to be some highs and there's going to be some lows and things will actually level out. I don't know what's your sort of thoughts on that one. Well, I mean, for a person who's about to buy, it, it is what it is, right? So the, the market has dropped and you can either put it off for a, <clears throat> a year or two and try and recoup those gains or try and find mm -hmm. another answer to that. And that might be Bank of Mum and Dad, which you and I have spoken yeah. about a lot of times. That's about 75% of our client first time buyers have some help from mum and dad, whether that's a loan or a gift. So not not totally unusual. And you might, you know, if your KiwiSaver has dropped by 10,000, then you may get that from uh, mum and dad. The other right. thing is that a lot of the banks have responded in the way that, so for instance, um, I'm sure I can name them, ANZ, um, have come out and said, look, if you w were at 80% LVR and now your right. KiwiSaver has dropped and, um, it's now at 82. We're not going to charge right. those extra fees that, okay, that we would right. have. So they've given okay. some lent. Now you're going to have to borrow more, right? You have yes. to borrow the extra yes. 10,000, but they're right. not up for those so some fees. You're not going to get that margin. So you're not going to be penalised if you're slightly right. under. So that's excellent. Yeah, that's which I think good. is a great response from the banks. In a, a, yeah. Yeah, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, our preference Providing would be that. The, yeah, our preference would be that all our um, our clients are, were on conservative anyway, so maybe didn't get hit as hard as they would, but it is what it is now. It's all happened and, and we can't undo that. Uh, That's so, right. Yeah. So that was obviously one of the big ones that came through. Um, then the other one that came through, not as high, so that was 62% of membership responses. The other one is um, my income or other income of my family will drop, so they'll they'll earn less because of um, what's happening with COVID-13. So 35% of respondents had that concern. 32% of respondents said that they were concerned that family members may, in fact, lose their job. Um, and then the other interesting one was sort of 20% of people felt that house prices will actually drop, which could be, you know, I suppose, bumping up that 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 portion of people that's kind of gone from the 50 to 70 percent of people having confidence that they'll be able to actually get into their first home. Yeah, yeah. And then there's, a, there's a bit in there too, right? So if, if 35 or 32 percent of people think they're going to lose their job, that that is throughout New Zealand, not just first home buyers. So, so there are going to be some people who want to sell their property because they're not confident they're going to be able to afford it. And the yes, next, yes. Um, the next couple of years so there's going to be some houses come on the market and investment properties that come on the market uh, that would be well mm -hmm. investment properties often, often those investment properties you know are in the lower end of the market i think we talked before rupert about you know potentially some airbnb properties as well you know um, apartments etc that have been built primarily for airbnb we actually might you know see more of those properties go onto the market um, so it will be really interesting to see what the real estate market, you know, I've sort of spoken on this topic a little bit over the last few weeks in terms of the real estate market side of things. And I've heard numbers, you know, 7%, 10% drop in the market, but a little bit of crystal ball gazing. What have mm. you heard, Rupert? Yeah, about the same. Yeah, it, it depends on what yeah. area you're talking about, right? So if it's um, not many first home buyers are going to be shopping in Hearn Bay, um, but you know, mm -hmm. and those sort of and those middle um, tier kind of properties, you might see a few investment properties released um, that where people aren't yeah. willing to take that risk. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And I think, you know, for investment properties as well, it's not just a COVID-19 and people losing their jobs, but things have become tougher for investment property owners with all mm. the regulations, et cetera, you know, with all of the, um, you know, needing to insulate properties, things have become tougher and tougher. And even actually with COVID-19, there's been, uh, there have been some um, new rules released in terms of longer notice periods and things like that. So landlords potentially are going to be under even more pressure etc so it could just be the tip you know something that tips them over the edge perhaps yeah yeah i mean i think that in terms of the we've spoken about the mortgage restrictions is, is over 80 percent going to get easier i can't see that moving so that's not great news for the first home buyers um, but it is there for a reason in terms of responsible lending and if there's a 10 percent drop in the market value that people aren't underwater uh, and their mortgage, which is which has caused so many problems in the past. Um, but I, I think if if, uh, if buyers can look to work around that, get their ten percent deposit or uh, sometimes five percent deposit, to be fair, um, then then they can they may be able to get into the market. Absolutely, and there's things um, that are really positive at the moment. If people keep their jobs, let's just say they keep their jobs, they keep their income. We've never ever seen interest rates being as low as what they are ever, certainly not in my time. We're also seeing things like petrol being at an all-time low. So that's, you know, got to be good for people. Um, people are saving money also in the lockdown. I'm hearing of people saying, hey, we're actually saving on going out for dinner. We're actually having to cook our own food. So you know, there is a little bit of a silver lining. It costs money to go to work. So if you're one of the fortunate people that have retained your income um, or are able to get some subsidy or something, Put whatever it is that you're saving over this lockdown, put it straight into that, you know, that house deposit for sure, because yeah. it's, you know, potentially if there's some bargains out there and, you know, you've got you've got good credit rating and you've been a really good customer of the bank, it just might be a really good time for you. And right. also take the time to look at other things that are available. You know, look at the first home buyer website, look at your website, Rupert, see what you need to do to become a great customer. Look mm. at options like your you own products and things like that. You know, we talk about that a lot on our website. How can we actually go in with bank of mum and dad who aren't actually bank of mum and dad? You know, look at the different the different models of buying your own home. Take the time to do that research now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's an unusual time in terms of forced budget minimization right like if if you've gone to a budget a couple of months ago and they'd said just stop going out and don't stop do anything spending. sit in your stop house for next month <laughs> stop, stop spending on petrol stop going to the movies yeah stop going to concerts it would have been you met know, with those things. yeah stop going to restaurants response. stop going to <laughs> avocado the things that they've always talked about with first home buyers yeah we would have just you know we all kind of did laugh i suppose yeah. because actually yeah. First home buyers, as far as we know, you know, they do try. They really do try to watch their budgets. But in this fourth lockdown, A, you know, you're planning. Look at the planning. Look at your budgeting. You know, or be, be on the be on the front foot when we come out of lockdown. Yeah. Start doing your research in all the different suburbs that you might potentially be able to look at going shopping for. Mm. Um you know, tee up a time with a financial advisor like yourself, you know, actually get your ducks in a row, use the time productively mm -hmm. and use possibly, the, you know, the, the money that you may have saved on the, the smashed avocado breakfast or the, you know, the cap the almond cappuccino. That's what they say, Ruth, isn't it? The <laughs> almond cappuccino. It was Uber Eats for me. Uber Eats is mine. Yeah. <laughs> is that the one? Right. Well, there's no Uber Eats. Yeah, so, yeah. It, look, I think, you know, we're saying to members, look, let's just... Let's stay calm and carry on. We still need to save. Um, you know, I think New Zealand is fortunate in that, you know, the government have been very responsive very, very quickly to doing absolute, you know, some really great stuff in terms of trying to keep people employed and, you know, really support employers, et cetera. Obviously, nothing's ever foolproof and we're going to have fallout, et cetera. But, um, you know, there are people in, in, in good, solid positions who will be able to, um, you know, come out of this and, and keep, you know, moving forward to that dream of becoming a first home buyer. Mm. So as a summary of your, of your general finance, 70% confidence they'll buy over the next three years um sort of 44 percent over the next three months that's um that's a yeah. great number so as well. 40, 43 percent of people saying that when they come out of lockdown i mean we're assuming that we're going to you know let's say we're in lockdown for another month 
So perhaps within the next three months, which would indicate a, a post lockdown go out and buy, that's actually yeah. a relatively good number. And if yeah. you think about you know, our members do span across New Zealand. I mean, largely they're Auckland, but they're from all walks of life. You know, our members are newly divorcees. They're, you know, they're immigrants. They're not just your young first home buyers. They're um, people who are second time around, who have you know, been divorced and looking to buy on their own. So, you know, we think that it's it's relatively positive feedback um, mm. that we've had from the latest survey. That is brilliant. All right. Hey, thanks for that. So um, for thanks people you. watching, uh, if they can go to firsthomebuyersclub.co.nz to um, sign up and, and have a look at all the information. It's a, it's a wealth of information on that website. It's amazing. Um, First Home Buyers mm -hmm. Club on Facebook is a very um, good presence and you can look at the you own structure there as well as a lot of articles that we do. Uh, if they enjoyed this interview, um, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just search for The Mortgage Lab uh, on YouTube. Otherwise, we put these on Facebook and LinkedIn and pretty much anywhere else we can put it. Um, so make sure you follow those social media brands. Anything else you wanted to add before we shoot off? I think you've covered it really well, Rupert. And certainly, you know, we would be doing more follow-up, um, you know, surveys as we've done and really trying to get you know more insights etc out of out of our first home buyer membership base because I mean we can sit and kind of think till the cows come home but it's actually really getting that information firsthand which I think is just you know so valuable so thank you so much to the people who actually did respond to the survey and gave us the information which is just absolutely fantastic brilliant all right thanks for that Leslie thanks for coming on thanks bye-bye okay.